So, um, first, for beginners with uh, Protege, the the uh, when, I, when, I go, when I go home for Thanksgiving and people ask me what I do, I say I developed this thing called Proje and they ask, well, what does it do? Well, it's really hard to explain what it does because it really doesn't do anything. Um, it's, it's a tool um, and it's kind of like a hammer. Well, what does a hammer do? Well, you know, hammers don't really do anything. They just kind of sit there. Um, the hammer is a tool that you can use to build things with and what you really want at the end of the day is not a hammer. Um, it's you know a wall or you know a doghouse or whatever whatever you want, and a hammer can help you get there. Um, it's a very strange problem indeed. If if the entire solution to your problem is protege, or if the entire solution to whatever problem you have is is a hammer, you have a strange problem um, because what you what people want are sort of applications. Um, so. Um, so in some sense, a uh, uh, protege is, is very much like a database. A database has these same problems. It doesn't really do anything. It's a tool that allows you to collect information. Well, that's seldom what, what you want in the end. That might be one step of the way to get you where you want to be. Um, so what you really want is an application that does something. And protege may or may not be helpful to, to get you there. Um, so the, so um, Protege is, is similar to a database. Um, constructing a class hierarchy is similar to constructing a database schema. You, uh, a database schema is roughly a model and a class hierarchy uh, with, sl with slots or properties is a model. Um, and um, instances in Protege are roughly equivalent to rows in the database, uh, in a, in a database table. Uh, the rows are essentially instances of the model that, that the table is. Um, so there's a lot of similarity there. So the, the, the issue is what, what are the differences? Why would you use one uh, over the other? Um, and the, there's a difference in emphasis. Um, it's, it's very unlikely in a database world that anyone that would ever construct a schema just because they wanted to construct a schema not populated, for example. Um, it's actually quite common for people to construct ontologies and never acquire instances. People often do acquire instances, but um, there, there's a real emphasis in Protege on concentrating on the model rather than concentrating on the data. Um, so um, if uh, the model is of equal, is often of equal or sometimes more interest than the, than the data or the instances. Or in a data, uh, in a database, the schema is of interest to some people, but the people who really want the database um, are, more in, are more interested in, in the data itself. The way that it's modeled is of secondary importance to them. They're, they would like good performance and whether the model actually reflects anything sort of real, as long as the data is in there and they can get it out. That's really what they care about. Where in Protege, people are very concerned about the model and whether the model is, um, uh, expresses exactly what they want. Um, and um, so, and there's a trade-off on expressiveness over over performance. Uh, Proje has, um, or most knowledge representation languages actually, uh, a somewhat richer modeling language. It's actually closer to an object-oriented database. It's actually richer than most object-oriented databases. Things like inheritance and multiple inheritance, for example, um, constraint overriding that's been talked about, um, and sort of webs of relationships, or this person is related to that person is related to this other person. That sort of nesting or network relationship is very common in, in Protege. Um, databases often, like um, a particularly bad example of something that you would not want to model in Protege is our newspaper example. Um, that's, um, that, that was a particularly bad choice of domain because that's a perfect database application. You have employees and, and, um, and you, you essentially want to acquire a bunch of information about them and query them. Um, so um, the database often has a simpler modeling language, but it's optimized for speed. So that what what's what you can model with a database is in some ways constrained by um, the fact that people knew whenever they're designing the modeling language, the the goal was to make a fast query, where that was not the goal in designing the modeling language in Proje. Um, it was to make it simple um, and powerful, and making it fast to query is a secondary matter, whereas in databases is, is the primary matter. Um, so, and often it's the case that someone will, will come in and they'll learn about Proje and they'll think this is really great and they'll go off and uh, try to convince a database person that they should be using Proje. And they'll get, people will get sucked into an argument like this, which is, um, is a really general one. So what can you do with technology X, Proje or databases or whatever, that you cannot do with some related technology Y? And the answer is almost always nothing. If, if the issue is 
what you cannot do, what you can do and cannot do, or possible versus impossible, the answer is almost always nothing. So uh, asking this question leads nowhere. So for example, what can you do with Protege that's impossible to do with the database? Well, the answer is really nothing. You can do anything with a database you can do with Protege. What can you do with a database that you can't do with a file? The answer is nothing because databases are implemented in terms of files. So you could always do that. If you're, if you're a programmer, what can you do with Java that you can't do with assembly language or C? The answer is nothing because those Java can be implemented in terms of assembly language um, or machine code. So the, the distinction of possible versus impossible really leads nowhere. And you'll never convince anyone that you, that you have to use Proje because it's impossible to do something with a file or with a database. So um, th this, is not, this is not a fruitful path to pursue. Um, the interesting question is, and this is just in general, but uh, specifically for Proje and databases. Um, the real question is, um, when is it easier or clear or more straightforward to use some technology X versus technology Y. Um, in general, if your technology has direct support for the things you need, that's usually better than having simulated support for the things that you need. Um, if you have direct support, um, people that are familiar with that talk technology will immediately understand sort of what you're doing, what you're modeling. It will be clear to everyone um, what's going on. Whereas if you simulate the support in some way, you can simulate inheritance in a database, for example. Um, no application that uses that database unless it's been specifically designed. So all the application developers have to sort of communicate to decide uh, uh, how inheritance is being simulated in the database. Um, and so that, that simulation reduces clarity and portability. Um, some simulation is often, often necessary, but in general, the, the less the better. So, um, so this is one of, the, one of the issues for deciding but sort of between two technologies. So um, in the case of protege and databases, um, if the model is a bunch of rich data uh, with many relationships that, are, that you often traverse relationships rather than querying for, uh, say, a, a bunch of, uh, uh, of employees, for example, or employees whose salary is less than 100,000. Um, those are so, sort of very simple, flat queries um, that are sort of more appropriate for a database, actually. And um, if the model is rich, um, and also, if the requirements in the application design are changing or not really specified, you're sort of in a prototyping stage. This is one place where Protege actually really excels. Um, because you have the classes tab and you have the instances tab, and people often will sort of create their model and then create instances and then go and modify the model and work and sort of work in, in a very iterative environment there. Um, databases are very good and very fast for doing certain sorts of queries. Um, you can do, you know, a zillion transactions per second in Oracle, but absolutely zero of those transactions are modifications to the schema. No one in a database in sort of a real world is modifying the schema while they're, while they're modifying the data. That just doesn't happen. Um, that happens in Protege all the time, where the people are modifying the class hierarchy while they're accumulating data. Um, not sort of uh, what one hopes that eventually the sort of the iterations converge. Um, but that sort of thing can go on and does go on in Protege uh, much more than it would typically in a, in a standard database application. Um, so Protege is particularly good at uh, exploration and experimentation. Um, quick iterations are possible to model the data and the application design. I'll talk about application designs in a minute. So the simplified uh, answer um, is if you have a simple, flat, or fixed model, like the newspaper example, um, and speed is, is really important to you, then a database uh, can be used. And if you have complex uh, network-like changing model, and particularly if you have hierarchies um, that you'd like to deal with, then you should at least consider using Protege.